There's a whole new world of measurement coming to retail. And like any new world, it's immature, complicated, and full of pitfalls. Let's take a look. Store experiences can't stay the same. The great advantage stores have over e-commerce is the potential to deliver an experience, not just an item. But that's not easy, as these companies can all attest. Here's the thing. Doing fundamentally new stuff is always hard. You never get it right the first time. Great experiences only come from understanding what's working and what isn't so that you can make it better. Stores need better measurement. Measurement of how customers really behave. And that doesn't come from just knowing what customers bought. We've spent the last 15 years optimizing digital with analytics. We helped create the discipline of digital analytics and built one of the most successful consultancies in the space. Companies like Amazon aren't just kicking traditional retail's butt. They're beating a bunch of digital plays, too. The secret to success in digital has been the ability to continuously improve. And the companies that can do that, they almost always win. Amazon 2016, it's not much like Amazon 1995. Most retail stores, how much have they really changed? Here's the good news. Maybe for the first time ever, traditional stores have the same ability to track and understand how customers behave, what they look at, where they stop, how long they stay. The capability to measure the in-store experience exists. Wi-Fi, video, Bluetooth, even pressure-sensitive floor tracking systems. There's an array of technologies providing new measurement capabilities that can provide every bit as much information as digital analytics solutions. Often, they can do better. We think of store tracking systems falling into three basic categories, door counting systems, opt-in beaconing systems, and full store tracking systems. There's some overlap, and beaconing and full store tracking are often complementary, so it's not necessarily a matter of picking the best system, as it is choosing the optimal configuration for your needs. Here's a quick chart that highlights the uses and costs of each type of system. Door counters do one thing, usually pretty well, and that's count the number of people who enter the store. It's only one number, but it's an important one if you want to understand how well your store is actually performing. You know how much you sold, but without door counting, you may not know how many potential customers you had, and that makes it difficult to get a conversion rate. Door counting's cheap, but since it pretty much gives you just one number, it really needs to be. We've classified all opt-in measurement systems as beacon tracking, even though there are potentially different technologies in play here. Both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are popular opt-in solutions, and where customers opt in, these solutions can provide excellent comprehensive measurement and will also support interactivity and push promotions. They aren't counters, they aren't much good for store layout optimization, and they're only modestly useful for staff optimization. On the plus side, most opt-in systems don't cost that much to deploy, even at scale. Lastly, there's full store tracking solutions. These solutions outcount door counters with better recognition of groups and children, provide a treasure trove of information for store optimization, and in some cases, can be very effective for staff optimization as well. Not surprisingly, these are the most expensive in-store measurement solutions. Even though it's the most expensive, we think full store tracking is the right type of solution if you're serious about optimization. It's the only alternative that provides a full measurement backbone for the store across a wide range of measurement requirements and use cases. There's quite a few solutions inside the full store tracking pantheon, and one of the key differentiators is how they've chosen to implement their data collection setup. Wi-Fi and video are the two big contenders, with Bluetooth often serving a supplementary role. These two collection mechanisms are very different, and it's critical that you understand the advantages and disadvantages of each when you select an in-store measurement backbone. Let's start with Wi-Fi. You can track customers when they log on to your Wi-Fi access points. 
but they don't have to log on to be trackable. Most devices issue pings every minute or so looking for networks, and those pings can be used for journey tracking. That means that Wi-Fi tracking will measure the vast majority of customers in your store. Wi-Fi is also easy to implement, and you can piggyback off your existing equipment. That allows you to scale across all your stores and localize measurement, which is a huge win. Beware, though. Wi-Fi tracking based on your existing infrastructure isn't very accurate. In fact, it's probably not accurate enough to do much more than basic store counting. So while Wi-Fi tracking can provide true customer journey measurement, getting sufficient accuracy to do that meaningfully usually means investing in more equipment and especially custom setup. Video tracking works by setting up an array of cameras, each of which covers a small zone in your store. Tracking within a zone is continuous and highly accurate. And of course, cameras can also be used to help identify basic demographics like gender and age group. And in some cases, they can help you understand shopping groups. One other benefit to camera is that many systems can also provide security monitoring, lowering the overall infrastructure investment. So what are the drawbacks? Stitching together user sessions across camera zones is hard. So hard, in fact, that not a single existing vendor on the market actually does it well enough to be useful. This can get lost in the marketing hype, and because each zone is small, implementing a camera system can be expensive, especially in a large store. And that, in turn, makes it difficult to scale. Finally, camera systems don't always make it easy to separate out your associates from customers, fatally compromising the data. Here are the keys to getting a great in-store measurement solution. You need the ability to scale across multiple stores. Analyzing one store is never going to work that well, so cost is critical. Almost as important is being able to follow the entire customer journey, not stitch zones together. This brings segmentation to the table and drives much better analytics. And don't let vendors gloss over the accuracy of their tracking. We always say that no data is better than bad data. At least with no data, you know what you don't know. The key to relevancy is integrating store layout into the software. Comparing outdated paper planograms to customer behaviors is a prescription for failure. Another prescription for failure Reports that are just data dumps. Vendors often talk about data as a gold mine, and it's a good analogy because they provide a shovel and expect you to do a load of backbreaking work. Good reports should make it easy for you to understand how they're going to be used so you aren't digging randomly into the side of a mountain. Lastly, getting access to the low level measurement data for your analytics warehouse should be table stakes. It's your data, make sure you own it. Finally, and here's something you should never forget, measurement and analytics are only useful if you use them. Don't bother investing in store measurement systems unless you actually have the desire and the will to use the analysis to change the way you work. Continuous improvement is the key to successful experience. Measurement is the key to continuous improvement, but none of this means anything unless you understand the need to test, experiment, and yes, because it will happen, fail. So if you'd like help planning your in-store analytics journey or have additional questions, drop us a line.